Over the past three decades or so, people have flocked to the Northwest to work in our region's strong tech and aerospace industries. But from the mid-19th century to the early 20th century, people came to our region for agricultural, mining, logging, and even jobs with the railroad. Many of these opportunities were in small towns that were just starting to boom, like here in Liberty, which is just north of Cleelum. But not long after these towns were founded, for numerous reasons, these communities became abandoned, leaving behind empty houses, businesses, and other commercial structures, some of them to become part of the land that they were built on. In part one of my Ghost Towns of the Pacific Northwest series, I take a closer look at Wellington, now known to many as Thai, a name change decided upon after the worst avalanche disaster in American history all but wiped this community off the map. The railroad was phenomenal when it came to migration to western states during the latter half of the 19th century to the early 20th century. Thanks to trains, towns and depots started to sprout up throughout the west, including right here in the Pacific Northwest. The railroad played a major part in developing Washington. Um, before, prior to the coming of the railroad, folks who came out here had to come by ship, by wagon or by foot. Um, and that resulted in a significant supply shortage out here, which also in turn resulted in um, smaller communities. Once the railroad came to the Northwest, uh, goods were able to be brought out, building material was able to be brought out much more easy, easily. Um, at that time, um, communities started to boom. One of those many towns was known as Wellington, which was located just a few miles west of Stevens Pass in the Cascades. Part of Wellington still stands today as a reminder of Washington's rich rail history. Well, Wellington was uh, originally the base of the west side of the of the uh, switchbacks that went over Stevens Pass, and that was the the setting off point for setting trains up over the pass. They would they would get their orders there. Wellington was founded in 1893 and operated by the Great Northern Railway. But just after 1.30 a.m. on March 1, 1910, a massive avalanche caused by lightning would sweep two trains, one that was carrying mail and the other was carrying over 100 passengers off the tracks and down more than 100 feet into a canyon, killing 96 people. It remains the deadliest avalanche in American history. Everybody was in disbelief at what, what had just happened, you know because it was like one minute you have this here and the next minute it's gone. You know, they, there was screaming and yelling at a point in time that that stopped because the people who, who were still alive perished because of the, the freezing weather and the cold. Historians say many people tried to forget the tragedy at Wellington and in October of 1910, the town was renamed Ty in an attempt to move on. When the Wellington Railway disaster um, hit the Northwest, it was the largest railway disaster at that time. Um, and in fact, it is, I believe it may still be one of the largest natural disasters in American history. Um, several, many people were killed. It created an enormous amount of press. Um, lawsuits followed. And in the aftermath of the tragedy, in fact, no one wanted to remember Wellington. Um, but its location, you know, um, in the passes was pretty important. And so they decided to rename the town, they named it Thai, um, in the hopes that folks would pretty much forget what happened there. Today, what remains of Wellington is slowly becoming part of the surrounding environment. The large cement snow shed built after the 1910 disaster remains, but most of the other structures were removed decades ago by the railroad to help prevent wildfires in the area. When, when they opened up the new Cascade Tunnel in 1929, the old route was abandoned. There was no need for it. They pulled up all the rail, um, and the, most of the buildings were raised because the railroad was afraid that there would be people staying there and accidentally lighting one on fire. And as nature continues to claim what's left of Wellington, there's hope that some preservation can happen and the site can continue to be an educational one for people to visit. I would personally like to see that taken up, cataloged, and put on display inside the snow shed, explaining what they were, what each piece was, and have it mounted on a, on a concrete 
pedestal so it can't be taken away. And while many people think this area is haunted by the ghosts of those who perished in the 1910 avalanche, Kevin Wiederstrom says the ghost town is more about history than things that go bump in the night. I believe you have to know where you came from to know where you're going. I've always said that. And that's part of our history, especially here in Washington State, and down through this, this valley that leads to Monroe and then further on down to Everett and to Seattle. It was all started here, you know. If you want to visit Wellington, it's about a two-hour drive from Seattle and a quick and easy hike from the trailhead, which is located near Highway 2 and Stevens Pass. Well, that will do it for this edition of Northwest Now Digital First. In part two of my ghost town series, I'll take you here to Liberty, which is Washington's only living ghost town, located just outside of Cleellum. Reporting from Kittitas County, I'm Chris Anderson.